was uh, a bit uh, uh, you know, unnecessary to tell you, but uh, let me just uh, remind you. So the uh, standard model charged fermion masses spend several more orders of magnitude, okay? Uh, this is displayed in this, uh, in this plot, okay? So you can look at the, the charged leptons and the down quarks, they more or less spend three orders of magnitude or so each, each of them. And the up, qui up, up type quarks, they, spend, uh, they span something like five orders of magnitude, right? So um, even though, uh, so another, maybe another interesting fact is that uh, for the charged leptons and for the, uh, for the up quarks, it's more like uh, that the, 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 the hierarchy between the heavier guys is a little less than the, uh, than the hierarchy of the lower guys. And for the down quarks, it's the opposite, okay? But okay, it's, small, it's a small effect. Okay, so all, even though something like this would be technically natural in the sense that you would not, if once you put this, uh, these Yukawa couplings or these masses, you would not expect any uh, large radiative corrections as for instance you would have for scalar masses. Uh, this is still a very puzzling, um, a very puzzling pattern that uh, has sparked a lot of uh, theoretical effort to explain, okay? So um, let's have a bit uh, of a closer look at the quark sector. So the quark sector, uh, for instance here, uh, um, is, is, is parameterized by two matrices, up and down Yukawa uh, matrices, okay? And uh, one can diagonalize them with four unitary rotations, okay? UL, UR, DL, DR, and then one, okay, one would need to have these eigenvalues here. Um, which explain the mass masses on the first transparency. However, only um, one combination of these four rotations is in fact observed, which is the ratio in the sense of these two left-handed uh, uh, rotations that, that, you, that you need to make, okay? Um, so if you look at the experimental values, the surprising fact is that not only do you need very hierarchical eigenvalues, you also need that uh, these uh, left and uh, the U left and the D left are unitary matrices that are approximately the same, such that they cancel here in this uh, in this ratio. And CKM matrix is close to the diagonal. So, in uh, in numbers, this is what one measures uh, experimentally. So, uh, area of these squares is pro proportional to the size. So you cannot even read the smallest one here. So let me. Uh, magnified a little bit, so this is something like 10 to the minus 3. So there's clearly a very hierarchical structure in the CKM matrix, and that is uh, basically telling you that these two left-handed matrices have to be the same, or well, very close to be the same. So they don't need to be necessarily small by themselves, okay? But you would need at least that they are very much aligned, okay? Okay. Um, so it seems extremely unlikely, in a literal sense, that such a behavior occurs fully by chance, even if you make up a, uh, a Yukawa coupling that has such a hierarchy in the eigenvalues. These two sectors up and down would have to uh, uh, pretty much know a lot about each other no, in order to have such a aligned behavior. Okay? So, um, so both, uh, this is maybe even the, ha the harder problem, okay? But okay, so let's let's continue. Um, uh, this is the problem. So let's uh, let's ask the question: How uh, unlikely is it really that we have such a pattern purely by chance? Okay. Um, so um, so let us uh, let us ask this question. The analogous question for the neutrino mixing is goes by the name of neutrino anarchy, and has been. Uh, uh, under investigation for quite a while, but uh, for the quarks there has not been much uh, um, uh, effort in that direction, and the reason is that it's really, really unlikely, okay? So let us do some little stupid exercise. Let's take Yukawa matrix elements from the up and down quarks, form flat priors, let's say between minus one and one, let's simplify our lives and do real Yukawas, okay? So then that's what you would get, just doing a numerical uh, uh, sampling, okay? From flat priors, you, you have the, the, eye, the three eigenvalues here and their probability density on this axis. So you see a, a, 
there is a little bit of a probability for some hierarchy. So this, this means that here, for instance, there is a bump for smaller eyeing values of about something like 0.3 or so. Yeah, But to get really, really large hierarchies, that's really pretty unlikely. You can do this uh, maybe a little bit, plot this a little bit different. So that's the, the cumulative distribution for the logarithm of the hierarchy. So what you should see from this is when you, for instance, ask the question, what's the probability of having a hierarchy between the highest and lowest of 10? Okay, so then you're here and read off this or larger. Ne? And then you read off that should be something like 20%. Okay, and if you have really have to hierarchy of 10 to the 10 to the 3 or so, this is basically zero. Okay, it's not impossible. You can have that by chance, but it's basically zero. Okay. Um, okay. Here's here's the numbers. So the have you have a hierarchy in order to have a hierarchy uh, of ty of the type of the of the down uh, walk you cover, which is the mildest hierarchy. Uh, you basically have a probability of four times ten to the minus three. If you want a charged lepton hierarchy or larger, you have probability of 10 to the minus, also 10 to the minus 3, and so essentially it goes like 1 over the hierarchy, okay? For the top sec, for the top up hierarchy, it's, it's a really, really tiny probability, okay? And of course, uh, you can imagine that even when, if, even if you have, are very lucky and you, <laughs> you make such a thing purely by chance, it's completely, uh, still uh, completely um, uh, uh, non-trivial to get an alignment of the two cases, okay? So the, even if you have too small Yukawa, so two higher, two Yukawa couplings with such a hierarchy, they will not be aligned in general, and you have large CKM matrix, okay? Okay, so um, let's just uh, ask ourselves a different question. Let's consider completely ad hoc. I will, uh, uh, I will build a model later that, expl that, that has such a structure. But the Yukawa coupling is not, it's, it's just a product of several Yukawa, pro, proto Yukawa couplings, okay? And each of these proto Yukawas, y1, y2, my n, we take from uniform uh, independent priors, okay? From independent prior, I mean the, you know, the, the base distribution for these, for these proto Yukawa elements, okay? And what you find, surprisingly, is that the spectrum becomes ra very rapidly hierarchical for increasing n. So this is the case for n equal 5. And you see that now it's uh, rather likely to have that the light, lightest uh, uh, guy is something like 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, okay? So, yeah. So the different colors are following. So this is a 3 by 3 matrix. They have three eigenvalues, okay? For each case, I have the largest, medium, and a small eigenvalue. Exactly. Those are the three eigenvalues. Okay, so it's especially there are three, three this, this thing peaks developing, yeah? So you not only have a hierarchy between the largest and the smallest, but also in between, okay? And uh, this is quite prior independent, you can check. And typically, uh, what you also find is that the hierarchies you can even see here uh, by, by eye. Typically, the hierarchy between the uh, heavier two guys is a little bit less than the hierarchy between, let's say, the lower two guys. So this is more like in the charge lepton or in the uh, uptype sector, okay? So now uh, let's look at a, a particular case. So this is a, that's just one of, one of these many points that I generated previously. This is in the case n equals 7. You get something like this, okay? So you ma multiply seven matrices. You take them completely random. You get something like this. So one thing that's, that's quite striking is that these actually these... Uh, matrix element remain order one, okay? But this matrix is quite degenerate, okay? So uh, if you, to just help you to see the, the degeneracy of this matrix, you normalize each columns by the first entry, oops. Okay, you get something like this, and you see uh, immediately that basically this is a almost rank zero matrix, okay? So one eigenvalue has to be quite small, and that's what you, what you find. So that's just another way of looking at it. And so you, you don't need to necessarily need that uh, these elements become small. They can stay order one, but the matrix becomes quite degenerate if you multiply uh, by several uh, Yukawa matrices, okay? Okay, so uh, there's not much that you can do analytically, but you can do something. Um, 
to really get the distributions for the eigenvalues for this uh, for this for this product uh, cases is, is basically impossible. You have to do complicated marginalization. But what you can do is you can compute the moments of these distributions. Yeah? That's what I do here. That helps already a lot to, to understand that what's going on. So, um, so here you have the distributions. So maybe look first at this, at this plot here uh, for the case n equal 1, n equal 3. So what you can see, the, the, the distribution develops into something kind of peaked. However, if you look at the moments of distribution, in this case of the flat uniform priors, so the, uh, the, the width of these distributions remains approximately the same, okay? Well, it remains the same exactly, okay? One third, okay? So um, what this means is that uh, if you take uh, the distribution for, let's say, trace y, y, tr y transpose, which gives you, like, say, the squared sum of the eigenvalues, you get something which is odd for that one, and that's what you kind of observe here, no? Okay. Now, um, you can also look, to, uh, to, to judge the degeneracy, you can look at the distribution for the determinant, okay? Uh, and the de distribution for the de de determinant would look a bit like this. Observe now that I take a log uh, scale here for the probability density, okay? So you can see that the width dramatically changes. Something from order one, in the case n equal one, to something quite suppressed in the case n equal 3. Basically, the probability density to get something determined of order 1 is, is reduced by something like four orders of magnitude. Yeah? Now, actually, log, that's the natural log, so a bit less. Two orders of magnitude, yeah? And this you can uh, also see semi-analytically, so you can look what is the width of the distribution for the determinant, and that you can actually con calculate analytically, and you get for this case of flat pr of, of, of uh, of flat uniform prior, something like 2 over 9 to the n power over n is the number of matrices that you multiply. Okay? So the conclusion is what we saw earlier already that the, uh, this Yukawa matrix made of, of simple factors of this kind gets very singular very rapidly. Okay, so the conclusion from this would be that the sum from this equation for the sum of the squared eigenvalues is something of order 1 and the variance of the determinant is this, so the product is something like bounded by something like uh, the root of this uh, uh, variance, okay? And then you can combine the two and you see that the uh, geometric mean of the first two lighter eigenvalues to the heavier eigen heaviest eigenvalue is parametrically suppressed with n, okay? So that's the observation. So if you take a product of uh, matrices and make them random, as you could, would, would expect from some UV theory that you don't know the details of, yeah? The best you can do is say, okay, maybe they are, uh, uh, they are randomly distributed. Then you would find that if that's a product structure, then the eigenvalue spectrum becomes quite hierarchical. Now, uh, let's come to the CKM. So I told you the CKM mixes the, the down and up uh, quark Yukawa couplings. So, uh, so they have to know about each other in some way. And one can show quite generally that a product structure of this kind uh, is uh, enough or sufficient that you have a small or hierarchical CKM matrix. So what you, what you need is that they are the, the up, down and up Yukawa matrix must be a product of some common factor times something else where this common factor is hierarchical. That's already completely sufficient for these two left-handed rotations to be very much the same, okay? So obviously in this paradigm of having uh, the Yukawas as a product of several matrices, what you could do is then that you take the first, let's say, NQ factors to be uh, identical, okay? So then if you have a large enough product of such matrices, then this factor will be hierarchical by itself and it will be common, okay? So if you can build a model, and I will show you how to do that, that has such a structure, then you will see that the CKM angles are, uh, are very much uh, hierarchical. So this is the, the simulation, okay? So this is for the case, I think it's n equal five, I did not put it here. So you can see I, I wrote here that vertical lines are the, uh, the three independent entries of the, entries of the CKM matrix. And then you have the, the large, uh, large angle 
medium angle and a, uh, and a small angle, okay? The distribution become kind of broad, but you can see clearly that uh, a very non-generic uh, pattern arise, okay? So if you have a, um, a common factor here, let's say five or so, then you get such a distribution. Okay, so um, let's actually look uh, into the possibility of an explicit model, okay, because this is purely uh, uh, ad hoc. So let's, let's ask ourselves, is it possible that we, um, that we can create a model which gives such a product structure for the Yukawa matrices? So uh, one way to do that is employ so-called inside models, okay? Um, so what we do is we introduce a number of vector-like fermions, QI, UI, DI, so just stay with the quark sector for now. And uh, so that would be the standard model. You start with the, with the standard Yukawa couplings. And now what you want to do is you want to, uh, instead of coupling the Higgs directly to the thoracyl quarks, you want to couple them to, the, to these vector-like guys and separate in this way the chiral guys, which sits here at the end, uh, in theory space from these uh, um, from the Higgs. Okay, so what mean? What is this diagram meaning here? So the diagram means that uh, uh, it stands basically for the Lagrangian. Okay, so you have here a Lagrangian, which is the Yukawa coupling, and then uh, each of these uh, sides here hosts one of these vector like guys. So what it means is that each of these blobs supposedly stands for a mass matrix for these vector-like uh, uh, fermions. And each link, okay, stands for a mass mixing between, let's say, U1, U2, U2, U3, D2, D3, and also between the vector-like guys and the, um, and, the, and the chiral guys, okay? So these inside models, they have a long history, not particularly in this particular form. But um, there have been many applications, for instance, this deconstructing extra dimensions, um, almost recently in the so-called uh, clockwork models. Okay, that has uh, there have been so quite some some amount of papers recently on those kind of of models. Okay, so basically, for me, the idea is here that you separate in theory space the Higgs from the from the Kyle uh, standard model fermions. Okay. And then you have completely generic uh, mixings between the Kyle guys and the vector-like guys and completely generic mass matrices for, for these uh, vector-like uh, fermions. So I take them here also as, as a paradigm completely random 3 by 3 matrices. Okay? okay, that's the basic idea. Um, so why does this help? So the first thing that you could do you take this Lagrangian and you integrate out these vector-like guys, okay? So doing that, you can do the first thing you, that maybe comes to mind is we take these mixings uh, somehow smaller than the, uh, than the, uh, than the masses themselves. Uh, this, this is purely for pedagogical reasons. After that, I will do a completely non-perturbative uh, analysis, okay? So, uh, so what you would see is that the actual Yukawa coupling, after integrating out, these vector-like guys, you would find uh, that an effective Yukawa coupling emerges where you have such a product structure. Okay? Basically, each of these uh, 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 interactions is, is, is one power of this mixing matrix K, and then you have an inverse matrix for each of these vector-like propagators. Okay? That's a simple, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, perturbative calculation. Uh, and you can do the same for the up sector. And you can see, obviously, that this part of the diagram is the same as this part of the diagram. So you have a common factor, which is a product of several of these y-hats, where these y-hats are something like uh, m minus 1 times k. Okay? So this precisely is the structure that we want, only that here I have done a perturbative approximation. Okay? I don't want to do that. Um, so one can, in fact, integrate out the vector-like fermions uh, exactly. There's no, um, no obstruction to do so. Okay? The only condition is that none of these true masses, uh, 
none of the two vector like mass fall below the electric scale, obviously, otherwise you cannot do that. Um, so to a very good approximation, still the masses only depend on the sums of the of the corresponding uh, number of vector-like guys, okay? So you have, uh, for instance, uh, the hierarchy in the up sector is basically only a function of the sum of the number of Qs and number of Us, and in the down sector, the number of Qs and number of Ds, okay? So and that is the, the full uh, diagonalization of this, of this mass matrix. So uh, just plotting here the, uh, the hierarchies themselves. So this is, again, this cumulative distribution. Uh, so again, the same thing. Uh, if you go, for instance, you want the hierarchy more than 10 for n equals 0. OK, let's go to a smaller value. Uh, 2, OK, uh, 10 to the 2, so a factor of 100. That's basically if you just have n, e uh, n equals 0 uh, vector-like guys. This hierarchy is basically very unlikely to happen. If you go to, uh, to for instance, 1, uh, of these guys non-zero, so this this uh, this probability will grow, and if you go to something like four, then a factor of hundred is completely the rule rather than the exception. Okay, and here are some specific numbers related to the standard model. So if you want to have a hierarchy larger than uh, uh, larger than the down quark hierarchy, which is the mildest as I mentioned, so if you have four, so you get something like twenty percent. If you have seven, you have something like fifty percent. And so on, you can go for the for the for the charged uh, lepton hierarchy, which is the next one, which is kind of close. And then you can go to the large one, which is the up type hierarchy. And so you need uh, something like ten or so of these of, of the, this sum to be something like ten. Okay. So um, as I already said, you can do this. Uh, okay, that's the mixing angles. It works just in the same way as previously. So that's a particular choice for the for the um, for the three numbers. Um, as already mentioned, what matters is this common factor, and this common factor of the Tuyukawa coupling is just parameterized by the number of of Q fields. Okay. So if they have enough Q fields, it's seven or six or so. You get probability distributions for for the for the mixing angles, which are kind of have have appreciable. Uh, values at the physical uh, values, okay? Well, you can obviously play around a little bit with these numbers. Um, <coughs> so this is not a, a prediction here. That's just, okay, to say that in order to get um, a probability distribution which would be called natural, in which the probability densities are not suppressed for such uh, mixings and angles, that is a uh, uh, ballpark number that would work, okay? So now for the leptons, you can do the same thing. You separate both the right-handed charged leptons and the lepton doublets from the Higgs if you want, and you can also do the same for the neutrino, for the right-handed neutrino if you like. Um, this mechanism does not uh, explain smallness of neutrino mass because it only explains uh, the spreading of the the hierarchies, and in fact, the neutrinos are not very hierarchical by themselves. But you can always combine this with the seesaw mechanism to get a small, um, a small neutrino mass scale. Okay, so this is something that has to be done on top. Okay, so what are the numbers from the from the lepton sector? What to expect? First of all, in order to avoid, so as you know, the the the, the lepton mixing matrix is non-hierarchical, is quite order one, so that can be implemented easily. Oops. by imposing that the number of these blue guys, the number of doublets should be zero, okay? Then you have, a, have no common factor, and so you can at least uh, expect that some of these angles are large. Um, also, as I said, actually the, the neutrino masses uh, among themselves are not very hierarchical. There's actually an upper bound on what they can be, something like six, or depends a bit on the if you have inverted or regular hierarchy. And so typically what you would want is that this number of, of, n, of, of n fields should be small also, okay? Not more than two, for instance. Okay, so but this is uh, completely parallel to the leptons, uh, to the quark sector modulo this fact that you, uh, that you want probably uh, to implement the C4 CISO mechanism 
uh, on top. Okay, um, you can always go a step further and ask the question, is this, is, is this choice of numbers compatible with SU5? So just to remind yourself uh, of the, what you have to do in SU5. In SU5, you unify the up quark, the, uh, the, the right hand electron, and the, and the quark doublet into a 10, and you unify the lepton and the down quark into a 5. So necessary condition is that N, U, and Q, and E should be equal, which we call N10, and N, L, and D should be equal, which we call N5. Okay? And then you can see that uh, a choice that works reasonably well is N5 equals 0, um, which is basically compatible with both the, uh, the smaller hierarchy in the down sector and the absence of large, uh, of, of, of large hierarchies in the PMNS matrix. Okay, so it's quite surprising that just with two numbers here, you can reproduce basically. So this would be the uh, the, the the Moose diagram of such a such a possible uh, SU5 extension of the model. So you would only have six or so uh, generations of this uh, vector, like ten, and uh, basically zero of the five. And if you for simplicity, also let's say zero uh, right-handed neutrinos. Okay. So this actually quite uh, just one parameter n equal ten can account for the observed three charge mass hierarchies: the CKM hierarchy and the PMNS anarchy. Okay. So it's uh, uh, well. Okay. So account for what I mean by that is that the distribution for the for the Yukawa matrix that you get from this kind of uh, model are such that their probability densities to get physical values uh, or are uh, unsuppressed. Okay? Of course, this is not a complete model, and I have not tried to, do comp to build a complete model. But as with any SU5 model, uh, you need some gut-breaking effects to distinguish a down and charged uh, lepton yukawa coupling, which both arise from the second Yukawa coupling, about the 10 and the 5. Whereas the, okay, the up quark you can you can model by, by just fixing uh, the Yukawa coupling of the 1010, okay? Okay, but that's something completely common to all uh, SU5 models, so that's nothing particular to this model. Okay, so let me just uh, conclude, no, well, still have some time, uh, to, to talk a little bit about the scale, okay? So, um, up to now, I've, nothing s uh, I've said nothing about the, the size of the masses of these vector-like guys, okay? So they can be, um, in principle, at any, any intermediate mass. Um, however, if you have such a model with a large number of, uh, of vector-like fermions, for instance, uh, 18 or so new tens, then you will run very quickly into a Landau pole of the gauge couplings, uh, not far above uh, the scale of these masses, okay? So uh, what you would then expect is that you have a cutoff, that's cu a, cut a physical cutoff, where this theory has to be UV completed, which is not far above uh, the scale M, simply because you have Landau poles. Um, so it's tempting to identify uh, the scale lambda just with the Planck scale or the Gut scale, which is completely consistent. Okay, there's nothing that tells you that these guys have to be light. Uh, in order to get the, the right value, because what matters are, okay, are ratios of these masses and mixings, and which can be, uh, of course, it's completely independent of the scale. Okay? So it's tempting to do that, so that would be a possibility. Of course, another possibility is that you have a lower new physics scale, for instance, uh, from a theory where these vector-like guys are composite fields. So I have not, uh, again, not built a model for this, but you could have something, something like something like this easily. Okay, this would uh, also kill the Landau pole because above this scale, these fields are simply not uh, degrees of freedom anymore. Uh, in any case, it's what you cannot have is that you separate somehow uh, the scale of the vector like fermions from the new physics scale uh, by a large hierarchy. Okay, and this is something that you would maybe also expect from naturalness, no? so that you cannot have simply a new scale in the desert without any explanation. Um, 
So both things are, are, are viable, uh, viable options. Um, so another related question, obviously, is uh, what about uh, flavor violating effects? Of course, here you have lots of new flavor structures, so you would expect a new source of flavor changing neutral currents. Um, so, uh, but of course, uh, if these guys are in this first in this first scenario, if these guys sit at the Planck scale, you will never see them. You will never see effects of flavor violation, so you are safe. So you need that in order to have observable flavor changing neutral currents. You need either a low cutoff, so the second scenario, or what you could also have, that you can have this first scenario with a large cutoff, but you have some other new physics scale, uh, new physics scale, for instance, the SUSY, uh, which kind of inherits then this, uh, uh, this flavor violation and, and carries them to the low scale. That's exactly the same thing what happens in, in other flavor models. So for instance, you have a Frogart-Nielsen model at the high scale and SUSY at the low scale, you still get constraints from supersymmetry uh, uh, two flavor changing neutral currents, okay, despite the fact that the full flavor uh, physics happens at the gut scale, okay. So both things are, are possible, but you need one or the other in order to even get any handle on, 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 on putting constraints on this model, let's say, from flavor changing neutral currents. Okay, so I guess I finished a little bit uh, uh, earlier, so there's time for questions. Um, so, this particular pattern of uh, standard model uh, masses and mixings that are quite hierarchical, at least in the charged sector, uh, can arise completely randomly if one accepts that the Yukawa couplings are actually not, not elementary, but they are products of several matrices, okay? So this is completely independent, it's a finding completely independent of this particular model that I showed. So this was just the simplest field theoretical um, uh, realization that I could think of. Maybe there's something else in field theory or something else beyond field theory that could induce such a, uh, such a scenario. I'm not a string theorist, but I know that string theorists work a lot on the generation of Yukawa coupling. So, so maybe there's a, there's a way also in, in other UV completions of a standard model to, uh, to induce such a, such a structure. Okay? So then I moved on nevertheless to construct this n-side model, uh, which has this property. Okay, and this predicts in, in, in particular new vector-like fermions with the standard model quantum numbers. And as I just explained on the previous slide, the mass scale of these new fermions is associated to a new physics cutoff because of the presence of the, the lambda pole of the gauge couplings induced by the more high multiplicity of these guys. And so this scale might be a very high scale, like the Planck scale, or some compositing scale, okay, um, or something else. Now, um, the last point, as I mentioned, is that the model is compatible with SU5 grand unification, and in this case predicts uh, that probably you only want uh, uh, a non-zero number of tens and, uh, zero, uh, and zero copies of, of, of five representations. So you don't want vector like fives, you only want vector like tens, while, uh, as otherwise you would just generate hierarchies in the, in the lepton mixing matrix. Okay? Um, but it's quite surprising that just with one parameter you can you get distributions that are sort of natural for all the Yukawa couplings that you need. Okay. Okay. So that's that's basically it. Uh, so any anything else you can ask me. <laughs>